Hello everyone, it's me, Donald. Tonight, I want to give you more for your money. So I'm going to have a huge presentation. My brother Dennis is going to come up and help me. My lovely wife, Nancy. Tonight, I'm going to give you an odd fellow fashion show. I think it's important to show your lodge, your, your lodge. Nancy's going to carefully go through garments, all the way from shirts to underwear. She's not going to pose, of course. Dennis is going to help me with my magic trick, and he's going to sing, uh, I Believe. My, I've been giving this talk for 20 years. Before David Rosenberg was a member, you'll see a lot of this is with David. I intentionally kept it old because in 2006, things have gotten quite a bit worse. But I'm going to show you how to turn your lodge around. If I pick on you, it's because I love you. I love Albert Aragati, even though he owes me two dinners in his house and hasn't had me over. I'm going to get Pat serving yet because she knows a lot. I want you to help me with this. Uh, I tend to use a military style, like a boot camp instructor. Yeah, if you're not paying attention, uh, Nancy will say, I have a whistle. But, but here goes. Dennis, you're going to help me with this. As I turn the pages, Nancy's going to show you a garment. She's not going to model it. Why not? Oh, what? I don't know why not. This, this talk is 20 years old. When I gave it, they didn't have PowerPoint. In fact, I still don't know what PowerPoint is. But I know it costs money, so I don't want it. But I'm going to talk on lot of socials, charity, community programs. And I'm going to show you the program that actually works, that we actually got to work. David will update this, but in 2012, there were just 126 lodges in California. Now the count is down. In 2012, there were 4,770 members. David has a new version. There are three kinds of lodges. There are lodges that watch things happen. There's lodges that make things happen. And there's lodges that don't know what the heck's happening. <laughs> Which lodge are you? Just to make things happen. <coughs> no. A lodge cannot be, if you want to go to a boring lodge meeting for two and a half hours, you can go. A lodge has to be almost three dimensional. And our lodge, we chose to have a social program and we have a charity program. We understand, Red Medley told me, past Grandmaster, some lodges don't give any money to charity at all. So, I went to a lot of meetings to find out how much you can give. So I'm going to give you a test. Uh, oh, by the way, what lodges have a charity committee? Raise your hand. Oh, you're good. Is that your Reguena? No. Oh, you're a show-off. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we have one too in the chairman. But this is your test question. It took me 20 years to figure the answer. What would you say your lodge should donate to charities? 55% of their income? 10, 40%? Raise your hand at 55%. No takers. How many feel you should donate 40% of your income? Good. How many people think you should donate 10% of your income? Good. How many people think you're not required to donate anything? Where's Peter Sellers? He knows the answer to this. Okay, well, anyway, you should give some charity, but you're not required to give anything. But I feel we have so much to give, and a lot of us are lucky. We have the time, the talent, and the money, so we should do something. To gain members, you should make your values known in the community. You should give, change your values into action. You should, you should take away our mystique. Uh, John Morgan, I think he's still alive back there. He would tell me, I loved your talk. He used to say, you built a wall around your lodge. Nobody can come in. It's worked because we lost 58,000 members. If we keep up this wall, we'll have nobody. I'm not Donald Trump, it doesn't apply, but get rid of that wall. This is 
just some facts. In 1928, we had 58,000 members. If we would have got $20 per capita tax, we would have had 1,200,000. In 1971, we dropped to 13,000. Although the state of California was over 20 million. In 2009, we're down to 5108, even though the population is 39 million. If we still had that $20, we'd only have 1,000, uh, 102,000 compared to 1.176. Nancy, how's the model thing going? Yeah, you wake up. <laughs> Here's our first. This is Vienna White. I borrowed it for the price is right. Here's an odd fellow's polo shirt. It shows my, our lodge. How many of you have gotten a gold ring from your lodge to be a noble brand? Raise your hand. Dave Arnold did. Read. I got a gold three-link ring. My lodge gave me this if I leave. But every noble brand in California won that meets requirements, it's a triple link ring. You can't buy a ring like this anywhere. This ring was only $32 30 years ago. Now I couldn't afford it. But anyway, I, you might notice this ring is right by my wedding ring. I love my wife. Which comes first? Nancy, which comes first? Oh, Nancy. Every large meeting should have reported committees. I want to hear a report of social committees. I want to hear a report of charity committees. I want to hear, of course, the treats committee. Our lodge has treats and a dinner at every meeting. We have a dinner. Uh, we, only, we only get a lot $150 for the dinner. But it has to be better than normal. You'll see that a lot of members like myself go to lodges just to eat. You should have an event outside your lodge. You should have a we have signed for lodge to go to events. This event should be better than any event anywhere else that should cost less. I'm also cheap as I something. Now you see some of this is already deteriorated. When you represent your lodge, try to have a positive attitude. We, I've been to the Saratoga home, the Gilroy home, the Napa home, the youth camp. Uh, we're in 50 states and 26 countries. Our biggest asset we have in the lodge is you. <coughs> Try to think about when I joined, a couple of really nice people got me in. There's a fellow named Don Smith. Who knows Don Smith? Have you ever been to the crab feed? The great tamale feed? I drive all the way to Linden to eat. There's a lot of other, Wayne Roberts. The trouble I have, a lot of the people that I learn from, they're dead. I'm next, so get this lecture. <laughs> you, you might have known this from history. During the Great Depression, there were 40 billion people, a $40 billion loss in the stock market. There were 12 million people out of work. We did this thing called priming the pump. Now, we used an effort called relief, recovery, and reform, President Roosevelt. I want you to use recruit new members, retain old members, and reclaim. If you want to get the pump going, you're going to need money, a newsletter, a website, a plan, a social, and a budget. How many of your lodges have budgets? You all should have your hands up. Shame on you. I'm a, does the Grand Lodge have a budget? Who can answer that? Does the budget work? Who paid you to say that? Who wants to lower the per capita tax to $20? Talk to a Jay after a while. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. They have a ten. Any lower? We we have a budget. This is make believe. But you're going to collect rents, investments, fundraisers, dues. So we'll say your budget is twenty-four thousand. We want to give forty percent to operations. Our noble brand controls that. We want to give ten percent to members' benefits. Every now and then, someone dies. We want to give twenty-five to socials. We want to give 25% to charities. I feel to succeed, you must have a budget. Is Armand to do out there, or is he awake? Jenny to do it's here. Okay. We'll, we'll just ask Jenny these questions. But I feel we need to give 
to unfollow charities and private charities. But as you know, you get inundated by everybody wanting money, every charity. So we have a policy. We will only give money, California Lodge will only give money or donate money to odd fellow charities or community charities our large members are willing to work on. We want them to work. Don't just come in and say you want a thousand dollars for an out. We have to work. And our charity committee, if I give Armin and Jenny a thousand to spend, they'll bring me three thousand. Right? You all got this? Don't feel bad if you can't see it. Uh, you'll get the human. Right now, I can't see it. <laughs> Make my chart bigger. When I used to do this, there were 10 people here, honest to goodness. Now I think there's about 20. You want to relieve the stress, bury the dead, educate the orphan. Now, what I wanted to do for you, uh, a lot of these, when I first joined people, especially sovereign grant people, who say, we've got to get more involved, we've got to do this. They're talking from Oklahoma, they have three members in the state. I want to show you a program that actually worked in 2006. This isn't baloney, it's fact. Some of this you'll understand, some you won't. The color codes, black, are, are, are uh, programs that come out of our operational budget. Blue are odd follow charities for Rebecca's. Red are community charities. In January of 2006, we sent money to the Rose Bowl float. How many of you sent money to the Rose Bowl float? Not everybody, but that's okay. We had a woman dying of cancer in Santa Rosa. Her husband left her, she had three kids, no place to stay. We, we built a room in her garage and donated money. How many of you have a crab feed? Raise your hand, everybody. How many of you use crab feed as $10 for me? I'm not coming to your crab feeds, but crab feeds are good. How many of you have a past grants event to honor your past? Good job. I don't know if you give money to the official IF research, we still do. We have a school that needs help in the city. We help with them. Peter will tell you, get involved in your community. This is in our community. How many of you, you have a reception for your district deputy? How many of you, okay, you should. Now, uh, in April we donated tents to the children's home. $1,500 worth of tents. We gave money to the Three Links Camp. How many of you have an annual golf tournament? Are we doing fashion model? We have to number two. Oh, Keep moving. Remind me to fire a leader. But we have a golf tournament. Old men love golf. I, I joined because of a golf tournament. $40 for the golf, the cart, lobster, and prime rib. I didn't play golf or use the cart. Lobster and prime rib. The guy there said, Ron, if you want to join for $10, we'll give you all the lobster and prime rib you want. I'm a member. I don't know what the heck your organization is, but I love lobster. You should have us. I like to see for the mile we made a, a beta breakers race. You probably, we had that. A leukemia, a leukemia walk, we did that. Now, in your lodge, if you don't have the time at your lodge, fine. What I want is your talent or your money. If you can't make it to the lodge, just give me your money. Did you hear that, Brian? Your money. I knew Brian when he was poor. We had a member in our lodge, Lou Woods, he got $15,000 worth of bikes and helmets for the children's home. He got $1,000 for the children's home. He went to Gilroy Chrysler, he wanted to donate a Chrysler for a raffle prize. Lou Woods did that. He doesn't have a lot of time or talent, but he's got a lot of money. But no. How many of you have been to a Giants game? Do you support the Giants? How many of you remember Seal Stadium? How, how many of you remember when the Giants games were free? I do. <laughs> anyway, we also went to the Children's Home Golf Tournament. Uh, we had youth night. How many of you, you might remember these names. Chris Reed, Kenny Atkins from the Stockton Lodge. How many of you know Lorna Hemfield? Remember her? She's still alive? She's back there. God bless you. We, 
I didn't know you were still alive. Is that, is that Chelsea by you? Are you still alive? Well, we have the juniors and the heroes coming. Ron Mills will tell you we need to support the juniors. Ron doesn't have the time, he doesn't have the talent, but he's got money. If you need money, see Ron. You probably remember the King's Men. You probably remember the Saratoga Barbecue. You probably remember, how many of you have been to the ORFRC picnic at ORFRC at Santa Rosa? Come on, some of you have been to ORFRC. Okay. Up the Russian River, 300 acres. Okay? I live up there, I'll get you in. I, Apollo's been there. How many of you have been up there and had barbecue meat from Fastiola Meats that sells their meat to the Fairmont Hotel? I have. Oh, you want to join my lodge, we won't take you. We only take young, good-looking men and beautiful women. Oh, that's me. That's you. Thank you, Tom. In September, we had guest speakers from the youth camp. John King, Betty Stevens, Doris Anderson. We had people come from the children's hall, and we gave them money. In October, we had the Alzheimer's Association memory walk. You know, I feel very close to this. I think I'm going to need this group to help me. So I've got some money. Uh, we have an Oktoberfest, Gundy File. How many of you are going to the Day of the Races with Peter Sellers? Yeah. Is Peter Sellers still alive? We're going to have over 400 members. Peter got us the tickets. He also he knew uh, Russell Bates. I don't know if he told you, but he'll tell you who the winning courses are. And our lives gives each member $1,000 to bet. Believe that. I think you should go to the races with Peter Sellers. If you have no money, the food is great. Right, Peter? Russell knew Peter Bays when he was a pup. California Live, how many of you have a Christmas party? How many have a real Santa Claus? AK Santa. We don't need to stop to the children's home for St. Pete. This is called the membership spiral. Now, remember, our lodge, when I joined, we have 70 members. That was 20 years ago. We had five in a meeting. As you get more members, it grows faster and faster and faster and faster. Finally, at one point, we had 350 members. Unfortunately, it works the other way. I have a lodge that had 126 members. It goes down and down and down. And when you get around here, you're going to go out of business. Right? That's called a membership pilot. Everybody doing okay with this? I'm going to, I'm going to blow up a balloon again because I'm full of hot air. <laughs> Hold the mic then. You know, people get bored from just hearing me talk. So Dennis is going to sing a song a little bit. Dennis, can you hold my balloon? Nancy, how's the, how's the uh, fashion show going? Oh, almost finished. <laughs> Oddfellow belt. How many have an Oddfellow belt? Yeah. I don't buy any clothes. All my clothes are provided by the Oddfellows. Now, our fellow's underwear. Well, I, I can't afford them. Oh, that's, put those back. That's going to be for our slumber party. How many of you guys have our slumber parties in your lodge? Oh, you're dull. You're very dull. We have a lodge that went to Alcatraz and they had a sleepover. We had a lodge that went to the zoo with all the animals and had a sleepover. Have any of you been at the zoo as a visitor or animal? Oh, Brian was in a cage. But just to show you this works, this is not Brian. In 2002, we got 22 members with this program. In 2003, we got 52 members. In 2004, we got 20 members. And then in January, we got 19 members. I'm not bragging about getting members, because there's more than members. Again, you can read David Rosenberg's book. How many of you bought his book today? Nobody bought his book? 
Come on, he's got over a thousand copies. You should buy his book. How many of you have gotten an autographed copy for me for forty dollars? Who bought? Oh, who bought? You bought his book. Oh, I'll buy it. Now. You can pay me twenty. Uh, this is also true. When I joined, we had five or six members. We had a goal of getting up to 25 members. We did. When I joined, we had 70 members. We got to 300. Uh, I have the 10% rule. 10% of the members you get 300. You might get 30% 30 at the meetings. Out of those 30, you'd be lucky to get three that are fit to be officers. It's really hard to be a financial secretary or a treasurer or a uh, treasurer or a financial or a yeah, recording secretary. Now, I want to tell you uh, the largest lodges in California from 2009. I want to emphasize to you to visit lodges. I visited all these lodges and had dinner with them all. I've been to Germany and had dinner. I've been to Denmark and had dinner. Lodges, I haven't been to Dave's and had breakfast because Dave doesn't want me. But he takes anybody. But Apollo Lodge has had 322 members in 2009. Everyone at Apollo Lodge, please stand up. Stand up. Okay. Don't sit down. Tonight at dinner, I want you to talk to these members. It's not necessarily good to be the biggest lodge, you want to be the best. Some of the reasons Apollo is big, I only use names, they have Pat Cervetti back there. She's the financial secretary. She literally pulls her hair out, what she has to do for capital. Apollo, anybody know Apollo Lodge's Noble Grant? Albert Aragati. Albert is the nicest man I've ever met in the hour. He owes me two dinners at his house, and one more after today. Right, Albert? You swear to God? You heard that. How many of you belong to California One? California One has the youngest membership at 48. We have the best looking man in the lodge. Do you agree? No. No. <laughs> nobody, ever, nobody ever says yes. How many of you belong to Golden West Lodge? Stand up. I want you to talk to the members of Golden West Lodge. If you have any troubles with your money, there's a guy named Paul. Paul owes me one dinner. Rita Cooper owes me one dinner. How many of you belong to Yerba Goena Lodge? Stand up. Yerba Goena Lodge is going to give us a fantastic district deputy next year. He's going to be huge. He's going to be huge. What's your name? He's going to be our new district deputy. He's taking all the lodges to dinner. He's going to buy drinks tonight. We don't have anybody from Lodi. Who's from Lodi? Do we have anybody from Davis Lodge? Yes, sir. Woo! Stand up. All right. You know, I have a problem with this. What's that? Remember, David took over from me. He wrote the new book. What I'm showing you is how things change. Of course, it's better. And don't worry about Davis Lodge. But this was back in 2009. Yeah, but that's a long time ago. Come on. I've, I've been a member a long time. Yeah, something against old people. Shame on you. Uh, remember, it's ch let me just tell you a fact. The, the top 10 lodges in California have 25% of the members. David Rosenberg. The top 10 lodges in California, six are from District 1. We had a meeting at District 1, Apollo, California 1, Golden West, Bay City. Peter said, we've got to give Davis a chance. We have to slow down. Right here. We've all been slowing down. You still haven't become number one. So we cut our numbers this year. We cut our numbers. <laughs> Would he lie to you? I'm not lying. We also have, Santa, is there anybody from Santa Rosa Lodge? Stand up. Ron Milks. There's, Santa Rosa. There's Mr. Honor. We have Karen. We have Donna. I love Santa Rosa Lodge. They have the largest dance floor in Santa Rosa. They, they are losing a few members, but we're going to take care of that. 
How many of you belong to Evergreen Lodge 161 Sebastopol? If you want to have a good time, go to Sebastopol. Uh, I go to, I've been at Sebastopol, most of the time they don't recognize me, but they have a really good lodge. Sebastopol is the 56th top community people want to live in. It's popular with the hippies that smoke pot or from the 60s, like me. How many of you have been to Bay City Lodge, 71? Bay City Lodge is a very good lodge. How many of you have been to Franco American Lodge? Oh, we, we. We, 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 we. They have, they have great cold meats. They have a lot of baguettes. They, they have whole meats in French, but you don't need to know what you're doing. And if you get drunk on wine, very good wine. And they have good brandy, too. Well, they also have brandy. The way you get to see these lodges is visit. I would encourage you to visit Davis. Go talk to Leah. I would, uh, every weekend or so, Dave has a free breakfast, right? Second Saturday. Well, but I've never been invited. Well, it's because you live in the past. Oh, <laughs> I don't mind David getting no respect, and Roger Dangerfield with me, too. I am in the past. I'm very old. You know, if it wasn't for those old guys, you wouldn't be here. Okay, I actually got this for me and better. Successful lodges, honest to goodness, they have income and budgets. They have newsletters and websites. They have membership programs. They have recruiters. I actually am a recruiter for the North Bay. I recruit and I headhunt for California One. We have members in five other states. We have members in Santa Rosa. It's not that easy. This, this came from Mr. Sellers. And a lot of our great leaders, like Peter and David, they're not bosses, they're coaches. Joe Montana was a great quarterback. Do you remember Joe Montana, Leah? Yes, I do. He's on one of my cereal boxes. Yep. You're about as old as me then. How long have you been married? 48 years? I, I've been married 49. <laughs> But I'm 23. <laughs> Plus. Plus. But you have coaches. You have a cause and purpose. You have a willingness to change. I did a survey. You know what the number one people think that people want to do at lodges? Dinners. Dinners, dinners, dinners. Planning events. Our noble grand advice grant of planning events for 2016 and uh, November of 2015. Our vice grand back there knows every event, crab feed, giant scale. You have to plan ahead. How many of you have awards and recognition programs? Awarding outstanding members. I'm, I'm going to join your lodge. You seem to have everything. I'll give you the application now. How much does it cost to be an associate? 55. I can't afford it. <laughs> okay. How many lodges just want to have fun? <laughs> I want you, how many lodges feel their lodge is the best lodge in California? Raise your hand. Woo! You don't have to be the biggest, you have to be the best. The best. You know, it isn't all about numbers. Uh, I've been outstanding lodges that don't have a lot of people. Uh, once it wasn't in 2016, I just got a complaint. But they're growing. But they're growing. They're growing. Which is very good. Uh, First, Nancy's going to be the new Noble Grand of Winter. Imagine a woman Noble Grand of Winter. That's the good news. The bad news, I'm going to be a right supporter, and she better be good. How are we doing, Dan? Okay. Get hold my ruler. Just keep holding her. I just want to tell you this needle is very sharp. What I do, I go around the class, anybody that falls asleep like Mel, I get them. So watch my needle. This, this is an actual thing from the fraternal times. I went online and wanted to read what people wanted to do to join my lodge. The one thing that people want to do nowadays, they want to fight hunger. You're doing good, Dan. They want to fight hunger. They want to deal with disease and helping people. 
They want to help poverty. They want to improve the environment. They love to go to walks. They want to help humanity. They want equality. They want to have fun. They want to do things that they can bring their families to. They want some kind of education. They want community service. How many of you all just do all those things? Get hot. That's what gets members. Join Morris Lodge. Morris Lodge. I like your lodge. These are the things people don't want to do. These are thoughts. Is Rick Boyles here? Is he still awake? He's still alive. This is actually what people don't want to do. They don't like the status quo. Stagnant. They don't like routines. My wife at home, when I ask her to do the housework, I'll go big. This is such a ritual. A ritual. Just like our ritual. They don't routines. How are we doing? We got it. They don't like memory work. They don't like to talk about death, death, death. How many of you like to talk about death? No. Oh, we got one. <laughs> Two. They don't like discrimination. How many of you belong to lodges that discriminate? We got a lot of fibers here. They don't like clicks. They don't like closed mindset. The last one, they don't like bullies. Bullies, bullies, bullies. If you've got a problem with a bully, a bully, I'll refer you to Rick Boyles. We have problems with bullies in, up in Sacramento. We have troubles with bullies in San Francisco. We have troubles with bullies, bullies, bullies. But I'll say one good thing. The year Rick was Grandmaster back there, Rick, Rick actually did things about bullies. If you have a problem with a bully, just go see Rick. And there are a lot of bullies. When I was new, uh, one member scared the pants off me. I can't say his name because he's one of our officers. Another member scared the pants off me. He's dead. Examples. Examples. A grandmaster to come in and say, you will be installed this way. You will pick these supporters. You can't have a dinner installation. You need to have uh, third degree members. Your members can't be casually dressed. Uh, those are all reasons. David Rosenberg. Is you still alive back there? <laughs> well, but David wrote a beautiful dispensation on what you can do for installations. He's the first grandmaster that's had the, uh, I can't say the word, but he came out, you can have dinner installations, it's up to your noble grand to pick. He made a beautiful dispensation. You should stay with that. He wanted the devil in no pants. What do you want to do? The devil in no pants, he did scare the pants off you. Huh? Who's doing this? All right, David uses this, he must have saw my seminar. This is a thought from Albert Einstein, right? Insanity, the definition is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. We get lodges that constantly do the same thing over and over and nobody joins. This is from Alfred uh, Hitchcock. This might apply to Windsor Lodge. Alfred Hitchcock says, the length of your meeting should be directly related to the endurance of the human bladder. <laughs> this is the Peter Sellers. You know, if you'll ask them, they will join. You've already seen this lady before? <laughs> okay. Now, when I, when I wind this up, I'm going to do a trick. In case I fail, Dennis is going to sing, I believe, because I believe you can improve your lodge. Dennis, you sing, I believe, I'll try to do the trick. Sometimes it takes me an hour to make this work. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come to show the way. I believe, I believe, I believe above the storm, the smallest prayer will still be heard. I believe that someone in that girl
right somewhere is every word. Every time I hear a new born baby cry, I'll catch a leaf, I'll see the sky, there ain't a high I mean. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Uh, we have a lot of questions. I'd like to thank my lovely wife, Nancy. My wonderful brother, Dennis. For all of you, even Leah, for putting up with me. Peter has a lot of questions. And thank you for coming. And adieu to you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. I'll, I'll put it away, man. Thank you.